great thing I remember about Jim is when I was in the hospital back in early 2017, Jim would call me pretty frequently, get Lindsay on the boys on the phone, uh, video chat, and uh, really helped to raise my spirits. Um, I was trying to do that when he was in similar fashion, and it's a very special person who will do that. That's one of the things I miss most about him, and miss him every day. So, love to you, Lindsay, and love to the boys, and love to you, Jim. I know you're up there watching over all of us. One of my favorite things about Jim Mooney is the way that he greeted people. Whether it had been a really long time or just a day since you had seen him, he was quick with a hug and a kiss on the cheek. I just always felt like he was so warm and welcoming. And he showed that in the way that he greeted people. Um, I miss him and I miss seeing him with Lindsay and his boys. I am grateful for the happiness and the joy that he brought to somebody that I love so much. And I am honored to be a part of remembering him. He is a very special person. Dearly. The best thing about Jim Mooney, in my opinion, is his character. He was an amazing individual. No vices that I knew of, very moderate in his habits, didn't smoke, didn't swear much, just a decent man, somebody that uh, a father would be happy to have his daughter marry. So I was very happy for Lindsay when she and Jim got married. I didn't know Jim at first, of course, and uh, it took me 10 years to get to know him. Um, and over that time, he became really my best friend. <laughs> That's what makes it so tough, because him gone, we were having all these plans, all these big plans about him being retired, me being retired, and watching those boys play ball, playing golf with them, all that stuff. Breaks my heart, of course, everybody else's as well. But Jim, you gave us some good, good times when you were here. One of my favorite memories about you, Jim, is uh, how you always used to like to be sort of at the forefront, the, uh, the vanguard of various things. Like uh, if there was a new restaurant in town, you had to go to it. That Cuban restaurant over on Fulton that you took us all to it was terrific. I'm sure your sister Karen remembers it well. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. When you, you know, something happened in cool in Chicago, the air show, we'd all head down to Chicago. Jim was always promoting doing something fun, different, and, um, you know, got all of us uh, Gersh's off our dead butts. Not that, that we were that inactive, but uh, Jim was a real good, uh, I guess, uh, got us uh, off the inertia thing and moving uh, and doing stuff that we really enjoyed, concerts at the park, uh, that sort of thing. Um, Jim, I miss you. And I want your boys to know how wonderful their father was. I love you, Jim. In honor of Jim Moody, I'm gonna share um, one of the memories that still brings a smile to my face. Um, Jim was one of the first people um, to make a comment to me after I had our daughter, Azalea, and he seemed genuinely happy um, that we had had a beautiful baby girl. And seeing Lindsay and him after Azalea was born, you know, internally I was just feeling, ugh, after having a baby and, you know, that whole process. And I didn't share any of that with Jim, but the first thing he said to me when he saw me, his face lit up in this huge smile and he said, Jessica, you're back, you're back. And it made me feel so good inside. And he complimented us on our beautiful daughter and made a really great comment about our son Ledge and what a great boy he is. And um, you know, that's just another taste of where I feel like, because we met Jim later in life, that we are just getting to the good part with him. And uh, that is something 
that I unfortunately regret in our paths crossing, that it didn't happen sooner, but it happened when it was supposed to. And thankfully it connected us to Lindsay and the boys and we will forever love them. So thank you, Jim, um, for the positivity that you did bring to our lives when we had the opportunity to know you. Love you guys. Hello. Wow. My favorite thing about dear Jim Mooney is that he was so generous, kind, and thoughtful. And there are certain things that I just can't throw away. And that might be something I'm wearing that he gave me. And um, I can't throw this away. Very thoughtful, Jim, thank you. As a matter of fact, here's a couple other things. He knew I love fall time. And he'd give me pumpkin coffee. He was always so thoughtful. He'd come over and we'd just hang out. I loved it. With his kids and Lindsay, and if Lindsay was, had to go to work or something, it was so much fun. We'd just shoot the bull. And um, of course, the kids were always jumping everywhere on every piece of furniture, but who doesn't love the movie boys? And I love that he had names for everybody. We know what mine was. Karen, thank you. And uh, he shared the same birthday as my son that he called Rude Dog, December 14th. Um, he'd always FaceTime me in the morning to make sure he could see my latest version of Bedhead. My hair was always sticking out everywhere. He just thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, um, there were so many things I just had, I just loved. Love Jim Mooney. Love those Moonies. Love the boys. Love the, Lindsay, love you. I love hanging out with all of you. I miss you so much, Jim. And cheers. This bud's for you. Hello, everyone. I am Jim Mooney's Auntie Kate. My favorite thing about Jim Mooney, besides his handsomeness, was his personality. Jim was very kind, generous, wonderful. He had such great positive attitude. He was upbeat, very generous, and vibrant. Jim was always up for anything, and I love that about him. You could go to his house, and it would be such a fantastic party atmosphere. I also liked his commanding presence. He enjoyed telling a lot of us what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and where we would do it. Perhaps that was his entrepreneurialness in him. My favorite Mooney, Jim Mooney memory was his thrill in the chase, getting the best of a deal. Paying top dollar was not in his personality. It really pleased him to get the deal that he was chasing. I also liked it when we were in a room together. I could look across, see him. He would flex his muscles. I would flex mine. And he'd always look at me with that little look like, you're almost as big as me, maybe someday. As if. And to end this beautiful tribute to you, Jim, you were a great guy. You were so loved and you will be in our hearts forever. Hi, Jim.
best thing about James Mooney was his love. His love for everyone, including his family, strangers that he passed on the street, especially his children, his goddaughters, his sister, his mom, his dad, everyone. He's just such a loving person and everyone's gonna miss that. My favorite memory with my uncle would have to be when we were in London. We spent my 14th birthday there and I will always cherish that, just as I will cherish every other memory that I've had with him. I miss him dearly and so does everyone else in my family. Thank you so much for doing this tribute. It means so much to everyone. Thank you. Hi. Um, the special thing about Jim is he would, when we would talk, he would give me all his attention. I mean, you just felt like he was focused on you. And another thing is he was like, everybody, I'm sure everyone is saying how, how kind and generous, which he was. And I don't know, but he let us use the Melbourne place. And we just did that last year, just over a year ago. And it was great. And there he had a 12 pack of Bud Light waiting for us. So he just, yeah, I really appreciated him and his laughter and very caring man, very caring. Yeah, what I liked about Jim is everything. <laughs> he was a complete man, you know. He talked to everybody, like uh, his friends said at the funeral. Yeah, he could talk to anybody, yeah. and I found that out. And I couldn't have met such a more caring person, and I'm thankful to know Jim Mooney. And that's about it. <laughs> yeah, he was the best. I mean, I just loved how personable he was. It was really endearing or enjoyable just you felt special and, and there we, you have it we miss him dear miss him miss him miss him some of my favorite qualities about my uncle jimmy were his selflessness his compassion his generosity his optimism he was always just a super happy fun guy always looking to make others happy see what he could do um I remember always getting thoughtful gifts in the mail, uh, postcards. A lot of us, I know, were t-shirt recipients. Well, something that, you know, he had a little bond with us over. Um, some of my favorite memories with him include going to see the Harry Potter movies. You know, he would always read the books first, and then when he was finished with them, he would give them to me. I would read them, and then we would go and see the movie. It was around every November, I remember they would come out and he would always make sure that he was able to take a trip out, out east and uh, we would make sure to do that together. Um, growing up, he was a big part of our lives. Loved spending summers up in Maine with him. Um, it's one memory. My papa said to him, I need you to mow the lawn today. So, okay, after he leaves, I get LT. Today's the day you're gonna learn how to mow the lawn probably 10 or 12. I learned how to cut the grass. Um, that same summer, I remember I wanted to play a prank on him, get back at him for always teasing us. And I woke up the one morning, I didn't have any clothes in my drawers. He took all of my clothes out. Each drawer had a respective plastic bag and all the clothes were hidden throughout the yard, somewhere in the boat, somewhere in the shed. It's just, just something I always remember. Can't believe that it's been over a year that he's gone and there's not a day that goes by that I don't love him and miss him. Hi, I'm Craig Schlagbaum, and I wanted to give this tribute to a good friend of mine, Jim Moody. I miss Jim a lot, and Jim always strikes me as someone who was one of the most inviting and inclusive people that I've ever met in my life. He was very unique in that way, and I think that's kind of what draw, drew me to him over many years ago when I first met him in the 2000 time frame and we did a lot of things together we went to a lot of sporting events and I, I actually met him at a baseball game out uh, with the Rockies playing the Dodgers in Los Angeles and I didn't know him at all but he was very inviting and friendly and warm and um, as a result of that I ended up meeting him after work one day in Denver and kind of just went from there we spent a lot of time together spent a lot of uh, evenings out and a lot of social events and Jim always wanted everyone to be feeling like a, a band of merry people all together and having fun together, no matter who they were, what background they were from. And he was very different that way. I, I don't see many people like that in this world today, and, and he was very much that way. 
One story that really sticks out for me is when he went out of his way for my birthday to show up in Arizona. And I was having a party with like 20 friends coming down and couldn't be there for that party. But instead he showed up two days early on a special plane flight just to come see me and brought a bottle of wine and spent half the afternoon with me and Allison together. And we had a lot of laughs and a lot of great fun. And that's all that he could do that day. And then he had to go on to another flight. And, and, but the, the kind of person he was is, you know, just to go out of his way, out of his busy week and make that time just says everything about Jim and what he was all about. And uh, I truly miss him as many times now, especially in today's day and age where I wish he was around or we could talk to him. But I wanted to send out that tribute to Jim, uh, a really good friend. Thank you, Jim. Jim Mooney, TJ Grissetti here. Just wanted to let you know that uh, all the boys miss you. We're always thinking about you. And I can promise Every year we do our boys' trip, it just won't be the same. That infectious smile is something that we'll never forget. I have a happy memory I want to share about Jim Mooney. Um, he was always uh, asking me when the last time I had my teeth cleaned was. And in England, you've got to pay to have your teeth cleaned. So I didn't do it very often. And he would say, you got a beautiful set of teeth you don't want to you don't want those to get messed up so he put um he was give me his favorite kind of dental floss I still have one pack upstairs um and he said we got a really good dentist in the family so call up Uncle Nick right now and schedule your appointment to have your teeth cleaned with him and um and I did and I took a picture and sent it to him and I have been taking really good care of my teeth and I always think Jim Thank you, this is for you. Um, I use his dental floss and I think, thank you. <laughs> so he's still looking after me in my oral health care, health, um, even from heaven, I can tell. So still keeping my teeth clean, going to the dentist as soon as COVID's over. We love you, Jim, we miss you. Bye-bye. Bye. I think about Jim a lot. Um, you know, I consider Jim my best friend and there's so many things that I remember, um, you know, I talk, I like to talk about the things and, and what he meant to me and, and ultimately his family, um, or what his family meant to him. I remember many stories where Jim would talk about, uh, visiting his mother and his sister in New Jersey. Um, not only stories, but even being there with him sometimes. Uh, Jim often would come to New Jersey and give me a schedule. Hey, Barry, I'm going to be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, leave Saturday morning. And on Wednesday, I want to come see you, spend the night, head up, go to New York for some meetings. But it always ended up with him visiting his nieces, his sister and his mother, uh, whether they were meeting him in New York for an evening out in the theater or whether it was um, you know, just having good times, going out to dinner. Jim and, and family was very important to him. Taking that a step further, um, you know, a lot of our conversations were around you know, the time that he spent with Lindsay's family, whether it was at Aunt Susie's place up in, uh, at the lake, you know, the condo, or whether it was golfing with the Gersh's or going down and spending time with them down in Palm Springs. Uh, Jim's feelings for his wife were, you know, were great. He loved her very dearly. And, you know, with Lindsay, it was a lot of things that made him say, man, she's just been good for me and has been good for me to know and, 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 and be part of my life. Uh, you know, I think about the times that he would say things like that to me, uh, whether it was when she was in Spain and, you know, her determination to keep them together while he was here in the U.S. as she was studying abroad, or whether the time that, uh, you know, at Jim's father's funeral, one of the girls was speaking, I think it was Aaron, and Aaron uh, had trouble, um, trouble getting through her speech, and Lindsay went up and helped her through it. Uh, Jim commented how much that meant to him and, you know, her support and things that she had done for him. 
and the boys, you know, if you think about the boys and what they do and how much he loved them, you know, whether it was little Jimmy or Connor and the energy and the excitement that they brought for him. You know, Jim talked about as being old a father. He wanted to make sure that he gave them all the things that they could have and give them and let them experience different things. There were a lot of plans that he had for Lindsay and the boys, you know, after he sold the company, you know, at some point he had planned to live in Spain for a year so that the boys can be in, in, ingrated and in, integrated into the culture. Um, there are just so many things about Jim that, you know, um, I saw him evolve and grow and become, you know, from from being a, a happy-go-lucky single guy to this very mature, loving father. Um, he's a good guy and I miss him very much. I miss my friend. Hello, it's Carly. Um, I'm in my car right now because both my kids are sleeping and I don't want to wake them up by being loud because there's nowhere in my house I can go to be quiet and speak loudly and clearly to uh, my phone. Um, I One of the memories that comes to mind about Jim Mooney is probably the last memory that I have with him or of him. Uh, it was the week he went into the hospital. He was trying to coordinate uh, Lindsay's birthday week with everyone. And um, even though he couldn't do a ton because he was kind of confined to uh, his wheelchair and oxygen machine, um, he was still trying to plan her birthday week so that she had something special every single day of that week planned out. And um, he was texting me a bunch to make sure that uh, the days that I was gonna do stuff with her that um, that was happening. And um, I still have those texts and uh, I'll probably always have them if I uh, keep my phone forever. Um, they're really special to me. He was so thoughtful all the time. He wanted to make sure that Lindsay had something every day planned out. I know she had different girlfriends um, that week planned and even on her birthday week when Jim was in the ICU those plans still happened because he had set them up so far in advance and everyone was planning on it and it made Lindsay um it was special for Lindsay because she got to kind of escape that for a little bit and Jim had set it up so it was just really special and just showed how thoughtful he was another memory um I guess not memory but just one of my favorite things about Jim was just his thoughtfulness and generosity. He always was asking what my kids were into and what they liked and dropping off packages and gifts and toys and clothes at our house. And every time we saw him pretty much, he had something for Roscoe. And we have so many things in our house that are from Jim Mooney um, that we talk about all the time because he was just so thoughtful all the time. Um, and uh, if you liked something, like if he knew you liked a certain type of food or drink or anything, he would make sure that if you knew you were coming over to his house, you would have it on hand and say, I got you this or whatever. And, and he did that with everyone. It wasn't just like me or my family. I know that he did it with pretty much anyone he knew and came in contact with. So it just shows what a generous and thoughtful person he was. Um, and I love, you know, he loved to travel. He loved to plan trips. He was always thinking about his next trip while on a trip with him. Um, he was just such, such a great guy. We miss him so much. Um, think about him and talk about him all the time. Roscoe talks about him all the time. Uh, talk about heaven. And uh, we miss you. We love you. Hey, guys. Um... Jim Mooney. I have struggled to do this several times. I don't know how many takes this is. Um, and I didn't quite know what to say. I had so many good memories and there were so many good things about Jim. Um, and then I was up at the early AM this morning going fishing. Um, and it clicked with me that I needed to say something about Jim Mooney and one of my favorite things was um, 
Jim knew I didn't like early mornings and I told him when I met Jim uh, that there were two things that I would wake up early for and that was hunting and fishing and I said above and beyond that I'm not much of an early person you can ask anybody who works for me and um, <clears throat> even with children I'm not a big fan of it Jim would text me at 6 6.30 in the morning just to tell me have a good day you know happy Monday happy Tuesday um, we texted we talked and he would send me little notes but he would send them at 6 or 6.30 in the morning and I said to him once I said Jim I said why do you text me so early I said kids are getting up you know how important those last few minutes of sleep are he's like hey he goes, if you're grumpy, just think about it. Have a happy day. You know, and I kind of laughed. And I was up early this morning, and this was, I'm like, you know what? That's got to be one of my favorite things about Jim. Was because you could be having the worst morning, start to your day, and there's Jim's text. Uh, you hear your phone buzzing, and the first thing you read was Jim saying, having a good day or happy Monday, um, or whatever day of the week it was. Um, my favorite memory of Jim was uh, right before he passed. Uh, I was fortunate enough to spend some time with him, and he'd asked me to go shopping with him, of all things. Um, I'm not a fan of shopping whatsoever. But Jim says, um, let's go shopping. He goes, I need a little help. Can you help me? I'll meet you there. I just need you to push me around for a little bit. And I thought there was something specific that he needed. I thought, okay, maybe, you know, he just needed something for, uh, you know, socks or whatever in the past he would randomly go say he was going to get was, I'm going to the store to get socks. And he loved his socks, as everybody knows, right? And um, so I showed up at Marshall's and I said, all right, where do we need to go? You know, where, where do we need to go? What do we need to get? Um, it was, I don't know. I want to see what kind of sales there are on a clearance rack. And I go, really? He goes, why not? What else we got to do? But, okay, Jim. So I proceeded to shop with him for an hour, hour and a half, as he sorted through the clearance racks of looking for deals for the boys, himself, um, even my son. He's like, oh, this will fit Ledge. What do you think? This is a great deal. Um, and I had to laugh so hard about it because uh, afterwards I told him he owed me a drink and uh, we went and had a drink for pushing him around to go barking shopping because he knew I really despised shopping so I'm gonna forever miss him he was a good friend and um, Barry thank you so much for doing this because uh, for procrastinators like me it was very tough and I had some encouragement from my wife and um, Dave and obviously everyone else who made a video and I really appreciate you doing this and obviously giving us an extra week. So I miss you Jim. I think about you often.